Well, now, Congressman Michael McCall, Chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee. Congressman, welcome. Thank you for being here. So, no, thanks, David. So, uh, President Macron uh, really reached out in, in a very, I thought, effective way. Certainly, it looked like you all were responding when he talked about Lafayette and he talked about World War One, World War Two. At the same time, he went straight at some issues, such as the relationship with Iran and the need to keep the existing agreement, even as you add to it. Uh, was he changing hearts and minds on the floor? Well, if I could back up to the historical alliance between uh, France and the United States. I mean, Lafayette's on the, the House floor, as with George Washington, I'm a son of the American Revolution. I thought it was great how he really went through the history of the alliance between France and the United States, including World War II when we liberated France on D-Day. My dad was part of that air campaign on a B-17. Really trying to bring the, the two countries together on uh, threats that face both alliances. And I think that takes us uh, square uh, into Iran. Uh, he does recognize Iran as, as a big threat. Uh, as you know, there are current negotiations on way called the E3 uh, between the United States, France, Germany, and Britain uh, to basically have a, a comprehensive agreement that in addition to the JPCOA, the Iran deal, uh, it would also touch on inspections. It would touch on intercontinental ballistic missiles, the ICBM, you know, capability, and it would touch on sunset provisions uh, and what to do with those. And what I, th I found very, um, I think, uh, uh, very positive today was that he agreed that these areas need to be uh, amended, if not amended to the J JPCOA or a comprehensive deal uh, aside from the JPCOA, however they want to deal with that issue. But for him to recognize it's a threat and tr to uh, sort of uh, agree mm -hmm. with those principles, I think it's a big step forward. Yeah, he clearly and very explicitly recognized those concerns and said they needed to be addressed. At the same time, mm -hmm. as I listened to the speech, what I heard was, let's keep in place for the time being what we have now and build on that and negotiate further. Do you think the president, ultimately the Congress, because you'll be involved with respect to sanctions, will be prepared mm -hmm. to say, yes, let's leave it in place while we negotiate with Iranians on the other issues? Well, I, I do think uh, the State Department is, is very aggressively negotiating this with the E3, those European partners, and I'm uh, the eternal optimist they're going to get to some agreement. As you know, uh, the president has really till mid-May uh, before he has to make a final decision on this. But I can tell you our diplomats are on the ground trying to work out these three major provisions that, again, to hear from the president of France that he was in agreement, I thought was, was excellent. And also, uh, when he talked about the chemical weapons of Assad and and the response by France, Britain, and the United States, again, showing our alliance together. And Mr. Macron just tweeting right now saying that France will not leave the JCPOA because we signed it, we decided with President Trump to work on a new comprehensive deal. When Mr. Macron was speaking yesterday, he also talked about the goal on Iran being a regional solution that would include Syria. Would a broader strategy on Iran also help with what's happening in Syria civil war? And that was the fourth pillar he talked about in addition to the three provisions I mentioned, and that is to deal with uh, Yemen and, and Syria. Uh, we have to have a political uh, a resolution to Syria. It's a civil war that's caused more strife uh, in our lifetime, I think, uh, in the, certainly this century with the refugees and the bloodshed and the rise of ISIS and now Assad using chemical weapons. Very complex uh, foreign policy issue, if you will, since Russia's there, Turkey, uh, Saudi's involved, Israel. All roads lead to Damascus and Syria. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I do, th do think diplomacy with the French is going to be important on that. And Congressman, we have uh, headlines today that another federal court has prohibited the Trump administration from ending the DACA program. You and Chairman Bob Goodlatte have put together an immigration bill that has the most support from conservatives that would include a more border security, uh, ending chain migration, ending also the diversity visa lottery. How much support have you gotten from the leadership to get this proposal going? Well, I think the support is growing. Uh, I will tell, I tell you, I just spoke, I uh, had a, a very good meeting with the Secretary of Homeland Security, uh, and this obviously is one of the, the top issues was, you know, border security. How can we uh, close these legal loopholes that right now it's called catch and release. We can catch them. If you can't deport them, they get released into our, our country, and some of them dangerous actors. And then finally, the DACA solution. I think it's very important that Republicans ha come up with a solution. Uh, we do in this bill. We give them legal status in this country so they can stay here without the anxiety that they currently have. And I strongly believe we need to fix that and, and fix it as soon Wouldn't as possible. That 
Wouldn't that be though a three-year renewable legal status, not permanent status? Yeah, this would give them essentially a yeah. It would be renewable, but it would give them a, a lifetime permanent status in the country, uh, and uh, as long as they don't commit, you know, crimes and and, and that sort of thing, it gives them a three-year renewable uh, to stay in the country. And so, uh, we think that's a good balance. I think, you know, do we enlarge it to DACA eligible? That, that'll be something we'll be talking about, but. Uh, um, I think, you know, um, as we see what's happening on the border um, and the Supreme Court's latest ruling on criminal aliens, it's imperative that, that the Congress act. I mean, the Congress has Article I immigration um, law authority, and uh, we can't, cannot do nothing on this. Uh, Congressman, uh, the president has been very explicit on this uh, from the beginning, well, going back to the campaign. What is the likelihood that you'll get this through the House and then the Senate? Do you have enough support to do that? And on what time frame? Well, I think it has to happen before the end of July. Uh, if it doesn't, then it's going to get caught up in campaign season. And then you'll see you know, both sides using this as, as a campaign issue. And I would prefer not to see this as a campaign issue, but rather something we can do to fix uh, our broken border system, immigration system, and to provide legal status for DACA uh, children in this country. And so um, I think our deadline is probably to the end of July. Um, I have a good relationship with Senator Cornyn, and I think, you know, this will involve compromise, no question, but it's important that we move forward in the House. Mm. Congressman, thank you so much for your time today. Congressman Michael McCall, Republican of thank Texas you. and Chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee.